Okay, we've seen how to implement coherent detection when we're sending information on a single polarization. But of course, one of the great advantages of coherent detection is the ability to send information not only on X polarization, but also on the Y polarization to exploit the two polarization states in order to double the information capacity of our fiber communications link. So now I'll be talking to you about how it is we implement dual polarization detection uh, how do we handle, how do we create a polarization diverse receiver? So to do that, we're going to start with the solution we saw with single polarization, uh, which of course we illustrate here. And our original hypothesis was that there was one polarization state present, that the input signal and the local oscillator were tuned together to have the same uh, polarization. And then we saw the mathematical development about how this solution worked in getting us an in-phase and quadrature uh, output. So now I'm going to be talking about concentrating on the polarization state. I'll use some um, illustrations for this discussion. I'm going to use an arrow here for the X polarization, a circle for the Y polarization. So using this notation, what we've seen previously was a single polarization, say X polarization. And we put here the symbol next to uh, both the local oscillator and the input signal to represent that there was one sig single polarization present. So now I want to take this solution, which worked very well with single polarization, and ask the question, how is it that we generalize this to polarization multiplexing? So I want to be able to take this I branch and Q branch, which I created for the X polarization, and to be able to create one also for Y polarization. So to do that, I'm going to take my single polarization solution and look for a building block that I can grab from that to use as the basis for creating this polarization diverse solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this portion of the coherent detector, which involves uh, mixing the local oscillator with the received signal and creating tributaries for uh, I and Q. And I'm going to pull that out and now the assumption I'm going to make is that now I'm going to have input on one polarization on my signal, but on my local oscillator, I'm going to assume that I have two polarization states present, both X and Y. And the local oscillator is going to have a very particular polarization state. It's going to be at 45 degrees of polarization so that there's equal power in the X and the Y polarization states, and that also uh, this doesn't change with time. So this is a, a characteristic of the local oscillator. Now, assuming this, that the local oscillator, local oscillator behaves this way, I'm going to take this hypothesis now that the EN has one polarization, the local oscillator has two, and I'm doing this uh, beating and mixing that's going on uh, following my 2x2 two two coupler. Um, and I'm going to combine this into one device, which is a hybrid, 90 degree hybrid mixer. And this hybrid mixer takes these uh, two polarization states of the local oscillator and applies them both to the incoming uh, polarization state, whatever it might be. So if I have this X coming in, this X and Y that I have on the local oscillator is going to be applied, apply gain to whatever polarization state is coming in. So this becomes the black box I see here. So I'm going to use that black box now to create this polarization diverse solution for the coherent detector. So my hypothesis again is that my local oscillator is a continuous wave signal. It has a fixed polarization state, does not vary in time, and that it has equal power in both the X and the Y polarization. On the other hand, the input from my signal coming off of my input fiber is got data on it, and it's got data on both polarizations, X and Y, and that this polarization state is random and fluctuating. It's been rotated inside of the fiber, and, 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 and so it, it's, it's, it's not static. And the, the local oscillator, completely different, completely static. It's just local. Nothing's happening with it. It's right inside um, the receiver structure. So in my integrated coherent receiver, 
what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is show you how we route our signals within the coherent receiver. So we're going to start with the local oscillator. And this local oscillator just goes through a beam splitter. So it knows that the polarization state is at 45 degrees, sends half of the power up here, both polarization states, half the power down here, both polarization states. Now the signal input, on the other hand, is going to go into a polarization beam splitter. And the polarization uh, beam splitter is going to go to the uh, is going to break the X and the Y polarization into two paths. And so that there will be one path for the X polarization and a separate path for the Y polarization. So now let's look at what's happening on the X polarization path for my signal. So my signal goes into the uh, 90 degree hybrid mixer with one polarization state contributions from perhaps both data tributaries, but now it's on one polarization state at, at any given instant. That's just the one polarization state going in. Local oscillator, I've got both, as I assumed I would when I decided to use this 90 degree hybrid mixer. And of course, we add the two balanced photodiodes in order to complete this section in order to get to an I branch and a Q branch on the X polarization. And, of course, all I do is I tile that solution. It's exactly the same here, except now the signal coming in is a Y polarization. Uh, but again, I'm going to get out an I and a Q branch, this time on the Y polarization. This means I have a polarization diverse solution. If, in fact, I only sent one polarization, then this receiver will still work well. So if that single polarization state at the transmitter was an X, but somehow it got rotated, it arrives here, I don't know what state it's at, next instant of time it could be at another state, it doesn't matter. This is polarization diverse, this is going to be able to re recover that signal no matter what polarization state it's at. Of course, if I have two data signals, two data streams, I'll also be able to use digital signal processing to be able to separate out two data streams based on this projection onto the X and the Y polarizations. So this is the final form of an integrated coherent receiver. And there is a standard, I don't think it's ITU, I think it's another industry uh, body, but they put out uh, many years ago a standards document so that when you buy a, an integrated coherent receiver today, it will have this structure. It has a polarization maintaining input for the local oscillator. It assumes that you're putting into it this 45 degree angle. And uh, for the signal, there are some optional uh, monitoring signal, which could be very useful to see what's going on in your coherent detector. But basically, they all have the same format, uh, what you see here.